Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and we're here to talk about part two of my fall capsule wardrobe and I'm happy to report that there's quite a bit here. I mean I've got a pile of fabric but <laughs> I also sew for a living so I gotta have some stuff um, and it's my creative outlet and my mental health. So um, anyway today we're gonna go through all the pieces that I'm gonna be putting in my fall capsule and we're gonna be talking about the fall capsule checklist and um, encouraging you all to sign up because this is going to go out in the uh, newsletter next week. So next Thursday, which will be September 22nd. So if you're signed up for the newsletter, um, you'll be getting everything, kind of a <laughs> recap of everything. But we'll talk about, about that more at the end of the video. Before we get started, today is Friday, um, and today's feature Friday for Love Notions is the Rockford Raglan, which is just a t-shirt, a raglan style t-shirt. Um, it can be made in jerseys, it can be made in French terries, it can be made in sweatshirt fleece. I've seen people size up and make it more of a sweatshirt. Um, but not only is the women's Rockford Raglan on sale today for $5 only, also the little girl pattern, which is the Wrigley, I think it's called the Wrigley, um, is also on sale today for $5 as well. So you can get both of those, one of those, and if you use the code Tomcat 10 you can get an additional 10% off both of those patterns. Also on the Love Notions blog, Ilsa is doing, a, I'm actually really excited, I'm filming this ahead of time so I have not seen the blog post yet, but she's doing a blog post on doing like 3D letters. Like she did her name on her Rockford Raglan with like a raised 3D letter. I'm very fascinated to find out how she did this because I can totally see me doing stuff on my own things, on my daughter's stuff. It's a way to kind of have a graphic tee without having a graphic tee. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to that blog post. So definitely head over to the Love Notions blog if you haven't already, um, because yeah, that looks really interesting. Okay, capsule wardrobe. This is the fall capsule wardrobe. And for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, just kind of switch things around for your spring capsule wardrobe. <laughs> and actually, in the file that I'm sending out in the newsletter next week, I have an empty fall capsule wardrobe for people to fill out, and I've also attached a spring uh, capsule wardrobe checklist there as well for you guys, um, just so you can print off what you want of that. Uh, and then my checklist that I'll be going through today is also included, so that you can kind of see what I've chosen for the fall, and um, you know, you don't have to print it out, but just so you can see it and then make reference to it or whatever. So before we get into this, um, I get the framework for my capsule wardrobes each season from Everyday Style. Uh, the Everyday Style Fall Capsule Wardrobe was released yesterday on Thursday. Actually, it was released Wednesday night, um, if you bought it. I do have a link for it down below if you're interested in purchasing it. I've actually grabbed a few things from links. Um, let's see, I grabbed a pair of jeans and then a few accessories from Target that I'll talk about as we go through things. Um, so it's, it's very helpful to help uh, supplement some pieces in your wardrobe, and they do all the heavy lifting for you. <laughs> And I'll explain why I bought the jeans here in just a second. Okay, so as a reminder, I talked about this last week, but the colors that I personally, and these aren't the colors in the Everyday Style Capsule Wardrobe, I've tweaked them to be my own colors. These are the colors that I'm going to be using for my own fall capsule. And sorry, I'm kind of chopping my head off a little bit here, but I had like my purse and shoes all, which you can't really see. I just can't get everything in frame. I need a bigger room. <laughs> um, okay, so the colors that I'm going to be using are... Uh, navy and ivory as my two main neutrals and it's my warm navy it's really more of a dark blue and then my signature color which is kind of a red slash dark bright orange I kind of use that in all of my capsules although it's not playing out much in this one it'll only have an, a couple of appearances in fact I only have one garment that's currently on the rack that's in that color but I do have plans for two more um, Anyway, and then olive green, which is also a great neutral, but I'm actually using it as an accent color for this capsule, but the pieces that I'm making in this could totally be neutrals for down the road. Um, I'm using a salmon pink, which is a pullover from my summer capsule, as is the warm red, um, and the spring, really. <laughs> it's the beauty of working in your own, like, color capsule. I'm finding a repeat of a lot of colors that I'm personally drawn to, um, and that are also, you know, even though I have, what is it, 35 colors, I think, for my personal palette, um, they highlight, the color guru where I got my colors done, highlights, you know, this is your signature color, this is your playful color, this is your energizing color, and I think there's like four or five of those. Um, and I find that those are kind of the best colors that are on the card for me. Um, you know, the others just kind of go with them, so it's very interesting. I'm, I love color theory, I think it's fascinating. Um, so I'm going with the salmon, keeping that into the capsule as well, and then finally I'm going with kind of, um, 
a camel, but it's a camel that goes almost rust. So I've got a few different browns in my color palette. I am a Copper Spring, which is, it's, if you look at um, other uh, color consultation people and the way that they break out their color capsules, because uh, there was one going around on Instagram where you could pick, all, it's like all, you know, 12 different color palettes. It is pretty identical to the True Autumn. So I'm, I don't know. But Color Guru calls it Copper Spring, which is the warmest spring. So I don't know. <laughs> That's what they uh, build me as, and I can definitely tell the difference when I'm wearing those colors. Um, and when I had my colors done before, she billed me as a True Autumn. And the colors I have from her... And there's a whole story why I've had them done twice. It's just because I've, I've gone into a collaboration with Color Guru, which is why I had it done again, um, just so I could be on her verbiage, because it is a little different. But um, yes, when I had them done with Christy Russell, she had me build as a true autumn, and the it's very similar. <laughs> All of these colors are in that one as well. Um, so yes, my camel that goes uh, rust kind of color, so kind of an orangey color. I was going to put that down, but I actually need it to look at. Um, because I also have browns that kind of go more yellow, like my camels that are go a little bit more ochre that are also really good for me as well. Anyway, okay, let's get going. We're going to start with the tops, and I'm just going to show you the ones I have made up, and then when I get to the one that, um, I'm going to be making, we'll talk about the fabric. Um, although you've seen quite a few of these in last Friday's video, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with those, because you can go back and watch that video, and I don't want to be repeating myself unnecessarily. So the first we're going to start with tops. I have put my Lago, this is the Itch to Stitch Lago Tank. Um, this is actually a free pattern and I actually, I don't think you guys have seen this on the channel to be honest. I mean I've worn it in like some shoots. It's just a very basic tank top. It's a free pattern on, on Itch to Stitch. Um, it doesn't have full bust or anything but I just made I think a 10. Um, if there's not a full bust a lot of times I'll make a 10 in her patterns. Um, she very rarely has patterns that don't have full busts anymore but some of the older ones don't. Uh, but this is the Lago, and it is in the um, viscose rayon, that, or the viscose spandex that I love from uh, Minerva in the kind of ivory colorway. So this is just going to be a great layering piece. Um, I don't wear a lot of tank tops just by themselves, although I don't know. I don't know why. Um, this is a little bit of a racer back, so I do have to do, I have to do one of those bra clips to bring my bra straps in because I don't have any racer back bras. Um, but I have those little clips you can get off Amazon that just pull your straps in so you can easily wear the racer back without the bra strap showing. So that's going in. All right. Top number two is going to be the blue Concord t-shirt. And I mentioned, sorry, talk towards the microphone. I mentioned this in last week's video. This is just the cotton spandex jersey that I love from Minerva and kind of it's called light, light, uh, light cold, no, just cobalt. There's a cobalt and the cobalt blue. I think this is just the cobalt. Um, so it's a great color. And actually, you're going to see the, a pair of pants I'm currently making that this is going to go with. But I'm making the Concord t-shirt with the scoop neck, a short sleeve one. Now, I am going to be adding in, like, my long-sleeved Concord, cream Concord is going to go into this. I just don't have it. It's not part of my technical fall capsule, but it is up in my closet to wear for layering pieces. It just, you know, when I'm pulling out all of my... And there really aren't that many. There's maybe five pieces still in my closet that I pulled down. Um, but I have a long-sleeved cream Concord that is scoop neck and a long-sleeved navy Concord that is v-necked. And those I'm, I'll be wearing as the weather cools. But I really want this in a short sleeve because we aren't quite... I mean, it's supposed to get in the 90s this weekend, which is stupid for September uh, in our area. But that's the way it is. Um, so I need some more. I just need another... Not some more. Just another... Concord or a short sleeve shirt. So that is the first one or the first one. Yes, that I'm making. I also want to say um, this video has prompted me to go through my closet. So I keep my off season stuff up in my guest room closet. And so I went ahead and, and moved some stuff around today. I've left a few summer pieces in my closet, but not many. Um, I left a pair, one pair of shorts, which are my jean shorts. Um, I'm just kind of over my other shorts right now, <laughs> ready for those to go away. So those have been packed away for the season, even though I'll probably still need shorts a few more times. Um, but those have already you know, gone. My more summery tops, um, even stuff that's in real summery colors, those have all gone up to that closet. I also take that time when I take things up to the closet, because sometimes stuff doesn't come back down. You know, not all of my fall stuff came back down with me. Um, but it may be something that I want to fall back in love with, or maybe I don't fit into it right now, but I'm close. 
I know you shouldn't, you know, dress the body you have, all that stuff, but my weight fluctuates so much that I do keep clothes that I don't currently fit in up in that closet. So I have things up there that I don't fit in, um, stuff that maybe I'm just not loving right now, so I'll just leave it up there for now, and maybe in a season or two, it'll come back down and join, you know, my wardrobe again. But I do take that time to go through, and I went through these like spring and summer pieces that were still up in that closet I had not pulled down and made a decision on some that, you know, have I just fallen out of love with this? You know, is this way too small? Like there's no chance that I'm ever going to do what it needs, you know, what needs to be done to get back into this, those kind of things. And I, I did call a few things, not a ton, but a few. Um, so I take this time and I'll do it again in the spring when winter's going into spring and I'll call through some stuff as well. So it's just a good time to kind of purge, go through your existing wardrobe and all that kind of thing. All right, next up is my Salmon Carlisle t-shirt, which is the Cashmere Club um, t-shirt. It's the square neck. It can go on the Concord if you want. I just did the Carlisle body on this with the elbow length Carlisle sleeve. Right? Elbow? It's a little below my elbow, but it's not really three quarter. Love this. It's in a cotton modal. I've worn this all spring and summer. Um, and I'm going to keep it in for um, fall. I debated putting it away just because the I don't know why square necklines scream <laughs> summer to me. But then I was looking through. I like to go through and look at all the links that come with the Everyday Style um, capsules just to get an idea of what I want to make and what their thought process was on what's going to go together. And um, I did see on one of the t-shirt categories um, there was a square neck shirt. So I'm like, okay, if Jennifer Mackie Mary says it's okay to keep the square neck in, I will, because this goes perfectly in my colors. So this is going to stay in for a little bit longer. Um, next is my Ivory Adrian. You guys also haven't seen this in a lot of detail yet. This is the Friday Pattern Company Adrian, and I've used, this is knit, uh, the eyelet fabric is actually a knit eyelet fabric. I'd never seen such a thing, but Minerva has it in a few different colors. Um, and this is the cream colorway, I think, or ivory, one of those. And I just paired it with some of the ivory, um, cotton spandex jersey for, also from Minerva. I keep this always in my stash because I you know, a white t-shirt or cream in my case, those get dingy so quickly. I just always keep this fabric in my stash so that I can make t-shirts and stuff out of them when I when one wears out. Love this top. I'll be talking more about this. Um, and I'm going to do a kind of a last end of summer makes you haven't seen yet type of video to kind of wrap up uh, something for my daughter and um, a couple of things for me that you just haven't seen yet. So that'll be on the on that one. Talk more in depth on adjustments I made and yada yada, but that's going into the fall. Um, next for my graphic t-shirt, this is a Kansas City Chiefs shirt. Um, I'm from Kansas City originally, and um, this was <laughs> my color palette, and my sister grabbed it for me last fall. I'm not really, I do not wear spirit wear ever, but I like that it just says Kansas City. These are the Chiefs original colors back in in their inception. Um, it's gone more, a little less gold and a little more yellow in recent years, but um, I loved this combination. It is a crop shirt, but I got the extra large. Um, I would typically wear a medium, I guess, and ready to wear, but I did get the extra large so that it would be not so cropped, so now it hits me like right high hip. Now, I don't dry it ever because I don't want it to shrink, but um, yes, so far it is a cropped shirt, but it hits like high hip, and I just think it's fun because a little homage to my hometown. Not really my hometown. I'm actually from a very small rural town, about an hour and a half away from Kansas City, but we moved here from Kansas City. It's where we went to school. All of my family now lives in the Kansas City area, so. Okay, next, oh, the striped Concord. I mean, my boat neck striped Concord, of course, this is coming back in. Navy and white. I mean, it's, this is just my style. I have a classic aesthetic, and, and it just comes back every time. So I'll wear this one until it wears out, and I actually have a lot of this fabric as well um, so that I can remake these shirts as they go out because <laughs> uh, I just wear them to death. But um, it's, this one's holding strong, still looking great, so it's going to stay. And then I'm bringing in my original, the OG, Cashmere Stanton hoodie. Um, I made this one very first out of the See You at Six fabric. Fell in love with the See You at Six Cashmere Stanton pairing, and I have not looked back. How many did I think I, I said I made like seven of them now? Um, including the two I made with the expansion pack. So this one's going in. It just fits the color palette really, really well, and it's fun to wear. I actually have more 
of this fabric. So this has a print on it, obviously, but I have more of this um, French terry just in this solid kind of terracotta color uh, that I bought a remnant of. And I used some of it for my dress that you're gonna see here in a second, but I still have more. So I'm playing around with making a pair of like leisure shorts or something so I could have a set, but I don't, don't quote me on that. I have a lot going on this fall, so <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if that happens or not. But I do have that option in my stash. Um, I would also like to point out that I have not bought any fabric for this, that like specifically for this. This is a first, folks. This is a first, so. Just wanna, just wanna put that out there. Um, next up, I'm not gonna talk about this much either because uh, Tuesday's video, I'm doing a Sew the Look and it's gonna feature this. But this is my printed uh, rayon itch to stitch Seychelles top. Oh my word, is it not beautiful? Yes, yes it is. You're gonna be hearing more about that on Tuesday. So stay tuned, I'm doing a whole Sew the Look. We're gonna talk about the cost of, of ready to wear and how that applies to sewing being less expensive and all that kind of stuff and I've done a whole sew the look video for you so that's on Tuesday. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. <laughs> all right next um, I also talked about ooh, talked about this last um, Friday but I've got this navy rayon crepe from Minerva that um, I'm gonna be making a Montrose, a cashmere at Montrose out of. This is just gonna be kind of my um, dressier, not, yeah, a top I can dress up or dress down. So I'm trying to decide. So the Montrose is a very basic woven t-shirt pattern. It comes with a short sleeve or a three quarter, or a elbow sleeve. So my question is, do I just make a basic t-shirt, maybe even with the cap sleeve that can easily be worn underneath things and layered? Or, do I have some fun and do some like a fun sleeve? But if I do a fun sleeve, that's gonna be harder to put into like cardigans and stuff. So maybe I do something with a fun sleeve for another thing and just make this, this just a very basic, easy to wear underneath everything, but a pretty shell that can be worn by itself or with other stuff. What do you guys think? Leave it down below in the comments. I just can't decide on my sleeves for my Montrose. I mean, I don't have a ton of fabric to do like hugely elaborate sleeves. Like I don't think I have enough to do like the Alton pleated sleeves, for instance. I don't think. I don't think I do. That takes a lot of fabric. But the other Alton sleeve is a, um, just like a Bishop sleeve, which I probably have enough fabric for that. But again, what do you all think? Let me know, or I could hack something, but let me know. Let me know what you think. Okay, um, next is my ivory Liesl & Co classic shirt that needs to be ironed really badly. <laughs> this is one of the ones I just pulled out of the closet and uh, from upstairs, and it's just kind of smashed. But this is just in my white cotton shirt. It's in my ivory color. Um, I mean, I just wear this a ton. I love this thing. I love it over jeans. I love it by itself. It's just a great top. So you guys have seen that a lot. And then my final top is my, um, I got this from Banana Republic back in the spring, I think. It's just my warm red, a nice lightweight. I don't think this one's cotton. I've cut the tag out though, because it was itchy. <laughs> I can't remember what it's made out of. I think this one might be, have a little merino in it. Is it a blend maybe? Or maybe there's viscose? I can't remember. It's nice and soft. It wears kind of like a t-shirt. I always get complimented on it when I wear it. And I think it's less, it's the color. I think that everyone always compliments me because this is my signature color. So this is a great little top to have. Um, and I don't mind buying these type of tops ready to wear because it's just a really lightweight sweater that I'm not gonna be, I mean, I could sew with a lightweight sweater net, but those are really hard to find. Um, like the really lightweight sweater nets. So <laughs> it's just easier to buy um, those. And usually I can get those to fit my bus without much problem anyway. All right, next up are pants. So the first one, and I actually have the pants in a somewhat state here, are the um, Magna Pants from the um, Cashmerette Ahead of the Curve book. You guys are going to be seeing these not on Sunday, but the following Sunday. I've made them wide legs. So these are a, um, I also just sewed, hold on, I've just sewed the crotch seam up, <laughs> so hold on. Um, 
I've done a wide leg hack and I've added pockets to the front. So I'll be showing you how I did both of those things, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. This Sunday we're doing the Honeyburn dress and messing around with necklines. But these are um, the pants, so they don't have a waistband on them, but I look at that check. These are meant to be in my summer capsule, just never happened. So they're happening now, and those are these are definitely going to be going in my um, fall. Uh, there's a lot of plaids in fall, but I love it because it's not really plaid, because it's a tone on tone. And look how well this t-shirt goes with those for like a monochromatic look with the lighter color and then the navy which is really like a this is a navy that goes very blue um goes with the the dark stripe in there oh just love when that happens but yes these are the first pair of pants again they're a wide leg they have a um, fixed waistband on the front with elastic in the back so um these are gonna be very comfortable and when I was going through a lot of the links, I noticed there's a ton of um, clothing stores right now doing elastic waist pants. Even like their plaid trouser pants are elastic waist or like elastic in the back, which is very exciting for those of us with wildly fluctuating waistlines to see. Okay, the next bottoms that I've got, um, I actually have my J. Crew jeans here kind of spot, because these are gonna go in my, I mean, these jeans and then these jeans that I'm wearing, which are, they're both J. Crew. This and these are J. Crew jeans. <laughs> but these are gonna go. These are just my straight legged kind of 90s. I think they're called like the 90s uh, vintage, I don't know, wash. I really like these. These are gonna go in my closet. But I did order a pair of jeans from the capsule. Um, I've really been wanting to try a pair of flares, flare jeans. Now I could totally make myself a pair, but I wanted a worn looking pair. Um, so I've ordered a pair from Madewell and I'm very excited about them. But that's why I haven't made those, mostly because of the wash. I wanted a nice, worn looking wash. Now they aren't, I don't get into like the holes and that sort of thing. Um, I don't mind the raw hems, I think that's kind of fun. Although these do have it, the ones I've just ordered have a finished hem, but I'm not a big fan of the holes in jeans, only because I feel like they just wear out so quickly. I know that that's a look and a thing, and a lot of people love those, and that's fine. Um, I just find that they wear out so quickly, so I tend to steer clear of the holy jeans. But I do like the more worn wash, so I have ordered those, and those are on their way. Okay, next up, I want to make a pair of Upland, another pair of Upland trousers, and I'm gonna make a plaid pair, and a wool plaid pair, and I'm going to line them. So I think, I think I'm going to use this fabric, and I'm pretty sure this was gifted to me. I, Lori, was it Lori that gifted this to me? Oh, I'm, I should have written that down, that's awful. Um, Cause there's two other pieces that I'm kind of going back and forth with. But let me show you, there we go. That beautiful um, plaid that's in there, and it's like my warm rust color. So they're plaid pants, but they're not um, like in your face plaid. So I like that about them, but I'm also wondering We'll talk more about this a little bit when I get, because I'm going to make a blazer. Um, so I think I may do the Upland trousers in this fabric and line them in something lovely. I mean, I have a lot of silk in my stash from my mentor Joyce, so I may line mine in silk, but you could very well line them just in an acetate lining, and that would be fine and would work really, really well. But um, yeah, I am going to be lining the trousers. But my other option... I also have, and these two I think were, these were, I'm almost 100% sure that these were bought to go together. So I was also thinking, or do I want to go loud and do upland trousers in this and a Jessica blazer in this? Or do I do the Jessica blazer in this and the uplands in that? I would not wear them together, but I mean, these would, this is going to go in my wardrobe beautifully. So what do you guys think? We've got... Well, actually, you can just tell me. Should my Jessica blazer be in the mustard solid or in this fabric? And if the Jessica is in the mustard, then I'll make this, because I feel like they need to go together, this in the uplands. Um, if I do the Jessica in this, I'll do the uplands in that plaid I just showed you. So which one do you think I should do the Jessica in? Mustard or plaid? And we'll talk more about that in a minute. So that will... So that's going to determine what I do with um, 
with the uplands, which plaid I use for the uplands, but I'm going to have a pair of plaid uplands. Next, my white jeans. Don't look too closely at these. I pulled these out of the dirty clothes. They need to be washed so badly. But I have my white, are these J. Crew? Um, I feel like these are too. Maybe not. Maybe they're... Why don't people put their tags on things anymore? I can't remember where these are from. Um, but these are just my white kind of, uh, that's a boy, a slim boyfriend jean. I've been wearing these, you know, not really all summer because it gets too hot. But I wore these all spring and I've been wearing them now again in the fall. They're filthy. I had them on yesterday. Uh, but these are going to be going into my fall wardrobe. I like white jeans in the fall. And then next, I've got my Navy Balboa skirt. This is the Itch to Stitch Balboa, which is uh, the Itch to Stitch knit pattern. Uh, knit skirt pattern and this is the one that I did the video where I showed you how to line it with the um, uh, Power mesh that helps give that slimming effect. I love this skirt. Um, it's made in a ponte. That's not Really navy. It's more of a dark blue and this is more the navy that's in my color palette And it's the same fabric that my Tessa is made out of that you're gonna see in a second <laughs> Okay, next up when I was thrifting with my friend Jenny not too long ago, we were at a consignment shop. And for those of you not in the U.S., a consignment shop is kind of like a thrift store, but it is upscale stuff. So things that have been worn or owned before, but more expensive type things that still have some value. And that goes to a consignment store where the seller... So if I were consigning something, I would get a cut of whatever was sold, and then the shop would get a cut. You split that in some percentage split there. Um, so it's a little different than the thrift store. You know, thrift stores, you just donate your stuff, and then you're done, and the, the charities, usually it's a charity that runs the thrift store, they get all the money from that. A consignment store is a little different. So these were consigned, and they're in this beautiful apricot color, and I just thought they'd go with so much of my wardrobe. Now, they're from Loft. They still have the tags on them. I paid $14 for these, um, so it's more expensive than my typical thrifting, but I bought them because um, they are a little snug, and when I tried them on in the store, they were a little snug, but I went ahead and grabbed them because the color was just so good, <laughs> and I know that these are the, a size 29 at the loft, and I know that when I'm in my typical weight range, a 29 is the size that I wear in almost everywhere um, when I do buy ready to wear clothes. So, knowing that I was inflamed and retaining a lot of water and a little, you know, too much sugar this summer, all of that, um, I went ahead and bought them. And actually, I put them on this morning, and they still aren't, they're much better than they were when I tried them on in the store. Um, I'm on a new eating plan, just whole food eating, that where I can have some control over that for my health. I need to keep my immune system at 100% because I'm taking care of my immediate family as well as trying to help take care of my mother who's going through chemo right now. Um, so I need to be healthy for her. Number one, I don't ever want to bring any kind of bug into her environment, um, but also just for my own family, and so I can continue doing everything I need to do, I need to be healthy. So I've been really sticking to a whole food eating plan, and right now I can just tell the, my inflammation is coming down drastically, um, which I think has a lot to do with sugar, because um, I've cut gluten out, um, and I eat very little dairy, although I, I was having probably a little bit more ice cream than I should be having uh, this summer. But anyway, I think these are going to fit great by the time it's cool enough to wear them. <laughs> So, I'm excited about these. All right. Next are my resolution joggers that I've made in my um, generic form of the Suplex um, that I got from Surge Fabrics. I love these things. I wear them all the time. But I think I mentioned in Friday's video, they're a little long on me, and my sister was making fun of me because that's just what our relationship does. <laughs> that's just what we do. Um... So I think I'm going to cut the, the cuff. I love these so much. They fit so well. I'm just going to literally cut right around the edge of the um, serging line that's right here. And uh, sew the cuff. So the cuff will be a quarter of an inch shorter. And the pants will be a quarter of an inch shorter. Um, but I'm going to take it up, I don't know, maybe an inch. And then sew it back on. So then I'll be losing a total of an inch and a half. It's just too loose on at the bottom of the leg. It kind of hangs over. It needs to be straighter, I think, for the style of jogger I'm going for. And then whatever I decide that length to be, I'm going to make a second pair. 
And the same fabric, but in this, I think it's called Coconut, I think is the name of the fabric. Also from Serge Fabrics, I have it linked down below. Um, I just think these are going to be a fun jogger style pant for me to have. And I'm, they're going to be exactly like my navy ones, just in this color. And I won't fluff up the leg length on these. <laughs> but I am going to be doing a mending slash alteration video. And these pants are going to be in that. So stay tuned. All right. So those are all of my bottoms that are going in to... Um, the wardrobe. Now, most of my making is really happening um, in, with my toppers, oddly enough. So the first thing I would really like in my wardrobe is a shacket. And um, I really want one, I'd like something with some olives in it. I think I want a plaid one. But I, I wanna do the Love Notions Aria because I already have that pattern and it's a nice loose shirt. I don't even think I'll need to uh, like size up on it. I think it's loose enough that I can just make it in a little bit thicker like flannel or something and I think it would be fine. So I'm looking, currently looking for a plaid flannel. So I may be buying fabric for that. I don't have any plaid flannel in my stash right now. I think I want something with all like an olive, mainly olive plaid that maybe has some like mustard with it or like my warm um, camel color maybe on it or even a little red or some navy blue just something with those colors um, so I'm still searching a little bit for that kind of but my other option when Candace sent me a lot of fabric when she had her colors done um, she's the the viewer that sent me the um, Montrose fabric that I have that has the the tropical print and then it's got the little tigers on it um, she sent me a lot. And one of them is this soft shell fabric. If you're not familiar with soft shell, it is a fabric. I, I would assume, I would call this soft shell. So on one side, it's like a, a nylon coating almost. Like it could be a rain jacket. And then on the inside, it has like this jersey backing. Um, and I don't think this has zero stretch. Sometimes they'll have a little gift, but um, maybe this isn't soft shell. Maybe soft shell is more of a fleece on the inside, but I don't know. Anyway, I was thinking that this could also be really cool. So this would be the outside. This would be the inside against the skin, kind of a work type jacket. So kind of shacket ish. Obviously it's not plaid, but that could be really cool. And I'm not even sure what pattern it would actually make a really cool Sienna Maker Jacket um, closet core, and I have that pattern. I mean, it would make a really cool um, Friday Pattern Company Ilford Jacket. I mean, there's a lot of really cool workwear jackets that are out there. I'm just trying to think of ones that I already own. Just being very mindful and being sewing economically um, right now. But this could be a really cool the view C of the Sienna Maker Jacket. Um, and then it would, you know, it would be just kind of a light layer. I don't know. But I do really want a plaid flannel jacket. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. We're just going to leave you in suspense. <laughs> All right. I'm also adding in my ivory sweater vest that I knitted um, back in the spring. This is the one that took me forever to knit. And then once I got it knitted up, the colors were very different. So I used the same. This is knit with a mohair and a fingering weight. Um, together as one and the mohair is that right no I think the fingering was the same all the way through it was the mohair that I had two skeins of and they were the same dye lot um, but you could tell they were not the same dye lot <laughs> um, it was very patchy but then once I blocked it everything came out fine so I'm, I'm very happy with this and I wore it in the spring and can't wait to bring it back this fall. Sweater vests are very much in again so that's exciting. I may also be knitting myself a second sweater vest um, my friend Jenny, who you all have met, is a, a pretty avid knitter, and she sent me a knit along that's going on, and it's just a vest, but it's two different, it's color work, so it's got two different colors in it, and I'm just thinking that might be a fun project to work on, um, because it'd be light and portable when I'm going back and forth to my parents' house, so we'll see. And then, the ever-present navy Harper cardigan. This cardigan is so good, guys. <laughs> I have three of these. I have a red one, I have a navy one, and I have a camel one. Um, and all three are in my closet right now, and they will be all um, winter. And 
the, the, all three go into this. Uh, I just decided to bring one down because, I mean, you don't need to see three of them. So the Navy won one for this round, but the other two are definitely in my um, wardrobe. And this is a free pattern by Sinclair Patterns. Um, it's wonderful. They have a tall file, a regular file, and a petite file. I made the petite file. They don't have full bust, um, but I don't have a problem with this at all uh, covering me. So uh, that's really good. And then I didn't have to shorten anything. This was brilliant. And it's free, which is even better. Okay. <clears throat> the other things that I am going to be making. Um, I am making myself a... <laughs> it's already cut out. I had a big cutout session this week, and I have eight things that are cut out, which is more than my five that I normally do. So I've got a lot of sewing to do. But one of the things cut out is a Metro Blazer in this red Ponte. It's in my red. Um... So I've got a cream one already, and I wanted a red one to add, a knit blazer. So the shawl collar version, this is going to be the Metro Blazer. I talked about this on Friday, too. And then, oh. And then next, my big project for the fall, I really want to make myself a Jessica blazer. I have made one. <laughs> I have one, but it's a kind of a, it's a crazy wild one. Um, and I want a traditional one. I've made one for my mom, I've made one for my daughter, and um, I really want a traditional one in my wardrobe. So, what do you think? Again, back to this. Should I make the Closet Core Jessica in the plaid or the mustard? And then that will depend on what I make my uplands in. So just vote at the bottom in the comments, plaid or mustard. Help me decide. So that's going to be a good project. Um, just kind of, you know, I'm going to be going back and forth a lot. I haven't decided yet. I don't think I'm going to leave any machines at my parents. I think I'm just going to travel with them back and forth because it looks like I'm just going to drive. Mostly because there's no direct flights from Indianapolis to Kansas City. So traveling when everything goes perfectly fine, um, and I don't even have a long layover, so I'm flying from Kansas City to Chicago, hour layover in Chicago, which you need at least an hour to get to your next gate in Chicago, and then Chicago to Indianapolis. Even if that goes completely everything right, from the time I left my parents' house until the time I got home was a little over seven hours, and um, it takes me seven and a half hours of driving time to get from here, from my door to my parents' door. So <laughs> And then I have my car, and then I'm not risking getting all sorts of germs um, flying to my mom. So probably I'll be driving. Um, so yeah, I'm still trying to determine what I'm going to leave there, what's just going to travel back and forth with me. But I thought a blazer could be something kind of fun to, I'll just put it in a um, shoebox or maybe a little bit larger tote that I can easily travel back and forth and slowly but surely get my um, Jessica made. So that's what I'm thinking for that one. All right, and then finally, for my toppers, um, I am making the um, olive Avril jacket. This is gonna be the Sew the Look for October. So I have three Sew the Looks plans for this, for this fall. Um, I'll be doing one on Tuesday. I've got one planned for October, and then I have another one planned for um, November. So this is part of the Octobers, but I have it all cut out, fused, ready to go. This is the cuff of the uh, Fiber Mood Avril jacket, and it's just gonna be a nice little layering piece and this beautiful olive color. Okay. So that is all my um, toppers. And that, again, that's what I've got a majority that I'm making. And then for my dresses, I just love wearing dresses in the fall, so I have a lot here. Um, first off, I have my, I have written on here my Navy Olympia, and I thought about leaving it in my closet. Actually, it's still in my closet for right now, but I don't know. The batik print makes it feel a little bit summery. It is sleeveless, um, although I could layer it over a turtleneck or something if I wanted to, but I decided to bring my tried and true Tessa sheath dress. This is in that same dark blue Ponte from Stylemaker Fabrics. Um, I just love this dress. It's just so easy to dress up or dress down, and you know, it's a little, I mean, I could wear it in the summer, I guess, but I, it typically hangs out in my wardrobe in the cooler months. So it came back down. It's kind of my uh, little black dress, but I can dress that up or down so easily. I can wear it with tennis shoes. I can wear it with boots. I can wear it with pumps. I can, it's just a great dress. And then next I brought, this is my Love Notions Aria that I made and added the tier at the bottom to make it a long or midi length dress. And this wonderful, um, viscose 
Shally from Minerva. You guys have seen this, I think. Have I talked about this on the video, on the channel? <laughs> I did a post on Minerva's site for it, but now I'm wondering if you guys have seen this. I think it was on my Instagram, I think. Was it? I think it was. Now I can't remember if you guys have seen this or not. If not, I will do, I'll talk more about it in a video, but <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, um, this is a, just a lovely dress. I, yeah, I have, I have. I did a, a video on summer dresses that I'd made and this was one of them. Yes, that is correct, okay. This is going into my uh, fall wardrobe, obviously. Ooh, there goes a shoe. Next, my Stanton dress, totally going into the wardrobe. Um, this is just too good and snuggly. Um, I can wear it as the weather gets really cool. I can, um, you know, I'll probably mostly be pairing it with uh, tennis shoes, but I could put tights underneath it once it gets, you know, really cold or leggings. Um, although I don't have really, I don't really wear leggings you know, as, as by themselves. So I don't know. But anyway, the Stanton is going in. And then finally, this hasn't been on my channel, but it's been on the Love Notions channel. This is my Harmony, um, that I added the tier to, turned it into a dress. I have a whole hack on their website or on their channel, but this is also a Distachify fabric. So I'll be talking more about the uh, details of this dress in my um, end of month Distachify video, which will be at the end of September. So here pretty soon, I'll be talking more about this, but this, oh, this print is just gorgeous. And it's in that beautiful green. And like I mentioned, um, these are all the clothing items. I do have more stuff in my closet that I brought down, a few more dresses, um, not many, but a few more. Um, this is just kind of be the core of my capsule wardrobe, which just makes it easy. And I, then I follow the everyday style, how she pairs things. I follow that a lot and just go through and it helps me come up with new outfit combinations that I maybe wouldn't have done before. And that's what I really love about that. Okay. So now I'm going to talk real quickly about the shoes and accessories I'll be putting into this. So I've got my tan booties. These are from Target, um, got from the spring capsule last year. So I've had these over a year. Um, I love these. They're just a good pointed toe and it's good for fall. It's got the perforated leather and stuff on there. And then the, you know, the deep V there at the, is it the vamp of the shoe? Um, yeah, it's just really good. Really good little boot. I have purchased a pair, a new pair of boots from Target because I did a Target order last night, but I think I may return them because I have another pair of sock booties that are a little bit more winter because they're more covered. I just, I don't think I need them. So I think I am going to return those. They weren't horribly expensive, but I think I am going to return those. Um, just got a little overzealous last night ordering a few things because I ordered some ju jewelry from there as well. Just a couple pieces. Um, next are clogs. I'm actually putting two pairs of clogs in here. So I've got my Target clogs from last summer, I think. I love these things. They're so easy to go, like slide on. They're comfortable. Yeah, and, and they are like my skin tone-ish, so they just blend well into my leg. But I also have this vintage pair of real leather red clogs that I thrifted for $5. The toes were a little banged up. My dad does a really good job of polish, polishing shoes and cleaning shoes. So he gave them a really good polish and now they look great. Um, I got, yeah, I thrifted these. These came from the Goodwill and um, I got them for yeah, five bucks and they fit me perfectly. They've got the little strap on the back. They're just a fun pop of color. So those are going into the fall. And what I did, you know, I have, if you watched my closet tour, I have all those shoe drawers now that are in my closet. What I did was I just rotated the shoes. <laughs> so I brought all of my cool weather, my fall shoes to the front and put like my sandals to the back. Um, Cause I think I'm done wearing sandals. Even if it gets really hot, I think I'm done wearing sandals for the year. Just gonna call it. I'll probably pack some for my trip to Disney in October, but other than that, <laughs> I think they're away for now. And then I have two pairs of sneakers. I've got my white Cole Haan sneakers that'll, I mean, those always pop in. They're just a good sneaker. But I did buy these. It's been a little bit now. Um, I bought these this summer. Look at these New Balance shoes. The colors were just so perfect. I was actually looking for a pair of shoes for my daughter and came across these. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need those. And New Balance are great if you have a wide foot, which I do. So anyway, very excited about my New Balance. And then as far as um, accessories, I've got my Michael Kors bag that'll be my primary purse that I carry. 
I also got on Amazon though and bought a, it's camouflage, but it's a very subtle camouflage, almost like just a difference in like sheens of the fabric, but it's a belt bag, like a canvas belt bag, crossbody. My sister got one for our Disney trip and is just in love with it, so I bought one too, but it's in an olive green color in the, in the camo, very subtle camo. Um, I was going between that and then just the solid kind of olive color, and my daughter's like, I think you should do the camo one, so. I went with that one. So I do have that coming um, just from Amazon. It was very reasonably priced. And then I bought from Target, I bought a pleather baseball cap. Yes, you heard me right. It's in a camel color. Pleather baseball cap. It was only $15. But I just was thinking this could be the answer, because I sit at soccer games a lot, for shielding my face and being a little high fashion. Because I do wear a straw hat, um, like in the spring and summer when I'm sitting at soccer games. Uh, and I, I usually wear a hat if I'm going to be outside for any length of time because I want to protect my skin. So we're going to try. So we're going to see what it looks like. If it looks awful, it'll just go back with the, <laughs> with the boots. But I thought I'd give it a try. And like I said, I ordered a pair of earrings and a necklace from um, Target just to help play up my own jewelry. And then I have a few things that are in my current jewelry box that'll be going into the capsule as well. Whew! So there you have it. My fall capsule with some plans along the way. Um, I'll do a big lookbook at the end when, when we get there. Um, also be doing a lookbook for, I'm making three pieces for Jenny. So we'll do a lookbook of her outfits. I'm thinking, you know, she's going through October. She's trying to pare her wardrobe way, way down. Um, I was thinking I may do something similar to her only to help stretch myself with outfit combinations. So my goal in October, and I'm going to do all of this on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram yet, go over and do that. I probably won't even talk about it on the channel much, but I am going to be just wearing nothing but my capsule pieces. So what you're seeing here and what I'm going to create the whole month of October, and my goal is to not repeat any outfits. So I'll be repeating pieces, obviously, but the goal is gonna be to stretch myself, to pair things that maybe I wouldn't have paired before, and to stretch things a little bit further. So we have 31 days in October, so that's gonna be my goal of October. I'm just gonna kinda do my own personal little wardrobe challenge to see if I can get creative with the things in my closet and, uh, yeah, stretch what I've got. And I think that's also great for, um, sewing economy type stuff as well. Just, you know, using what we've got. Better for everything. Okay, sign up for the newsletter because next Thursday, the 22nd, I'll be sending out a newsletter and it is going to contain, again, the wardrobe basic checklist, which if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, you will get this and the fabric buying guide. It comes in the welcome email when you sign up for the newsletter. But I know a lot of people sign up for the newsletter now have lost those, so. I'm just going to send them out again in next week's newsletter. So the wardrobe basics checklist and the fabric buying guide will go out again. And then the um, fabric or the fall 22 capsule checklist, it will include the PDF for this will include my two pages. So you can kind of see what I'm doing with my own wardrobe. It will include two pages, blank um, pages for a fall capsule and then two blank pages for a spring capsule. And really the only difference is that it says fall or spring because you color in your own color palette um, and it's got lines for you to fill out exactly what you want to make and then you can check things off as you make them, yada, yada, yada. Um, mine lives on my um, board back here, my uh, cork board, <laughs> while I'm making through things and then I tr uh, check things off as I go. So it's very handy. Okay. That's all I've got for you for today. Um, again, very proud of myself. I've not purchased any fabric. And if I don't do the plaid jacket, I won't be buying any fabric for this. So that's very exciting. I'm just using stuff that was from my stash. Some things were purchased not that long ago, but it was for intentions of making basics for my stash. So I'm feeling very good about those. Um, yeah, feeling very accomplished. Oh, and let me show you what else. My daughter's going to homecoming this year just with her girlfriends, and she's picked a dress from Vicky Sews. I will show you this when it is all done. But guys, she picked out this Silk Dupione, Silk Dupione fabric. Now, this is probably more a clear winter <laughs> fabric. She's a summer. Um, and we were looking at some more muted greens, but her hair is very purple right now. Because um, she is a cool color palette. She's just more a muted, a summer, a muted color palette. But her hair is so purple right now, which obviously when you're not working with a natural hair color, 
can kind of throw your color palette off a little. Um, but we decided it would contrast better with something a little bit brighter for her dress. Yeah, her face may get lost a little bit, but she has green eyes, so it could pull, it could, you know, salvage that a little bit. But that's why we decided to go with this brighter color, mostly to balance her hair. Um, <laughs> you know, when you've got the purple hair, she's rocking it, she's loving it. So we've gone with this color for um, a dress for homecoming. Homecoming is semi-formal, so we're going to do a shorter dress. Um, I made her a homecoming dress last year, um, and again, she just goes with a group of her girlfriends, so... That is what she has picked for her homecoming dress. I'll do a whole video when that uh, gets made and gets uploaded. Okay, that's it. That's a very long video. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hope you get some sewing in. I have a lot of sewing to get in myself. <laughs> I will see you guys again on Tuesday or on Sunday for a uh, pattern hacking video. We're going to be doing necklines. And I'm also showing you how to raise and lower necklines um, as well. Yes. We're doing a couple different outlines. So that is Sunday's video. And then Tuesday, I've got to sew the look. We're going to talk about the cost of ready to wear versus sewing and all of that in conjunction with the sew the look. All right. That's all I have for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and I will see you on Sunday. Bye.